on the building that appears to be blue over there. It's actually uh, the lighting from the uh, ambulance that's uh, making it look blue in the camera anyway. Um, I've been working on this building, um, which is Sarah's old building. Well, it's not Sarah's old building. I mean, it's Sarah's building. Um, and as you know, I lighted the, uh, the high-rise, and then I lighted the building on the left over here, and tried to make them look lived in, like not just put a one LED in the whole building and just have all the lights on. You know, treat each one as though it were a separate flat with a slightly different color palette, lighting from a different direction so that the LEDs aren't all in exactly the same place. Some are high, some are low, some are on the side, some are in the middle. If you liked the video, how about giving me a thumbs up? And if you're not subscribed, how about subscribing? Thanks for watching. What I decided I wanted to do was figure out a way so that instead of just being solidly lit all the time, that there would be some variations. You know, occasionally a light would go out, or one would come on. And uh, right now, the only one I have hooked up, oh, you just saw it, uh, that porch light came on. Uh, they're either getting ready to go, or uh, maybe expecting some guests to come over, and they've got the light on for them. But uh, that's what I'm shooting for. Now I can do that once I work out how I'm going to do it and come up with a relatively easy way to do it. Well, compared to what I'm doing now, anyway. Um, I will be able to have them all come on and go off at different times. Not like flashing lights or anything. Very slowly. Frequently enough so that, you know, if you were in the train room and you happen to be looking over here and out of the corner of your eye, you know, oh, did that light just change? That's what I'm going for. Oh, it came back on again. Um, at a rate probably even slower than this. I have this one cranked up a little bit just so that uh, for the purposes of this video, we can actually see it working.
to do this, the, the first thing I had to do is I had to bring all the leads down from each LED down to where I'm going to establish the controls, which I actually did on the other two. So the, all three have uh, each room or each LED has a lead that comes down to a central point. So that later on, if I decided to do something like this, for instance, I would be able to. So that I, I didn't have to rewire the entire building just uh, in order to play around with concepts like this. I don't know that 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 uh, porch light keeps flashing on and off. <laughs> Maybe the kids are playing with it. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, you know, just to add a little uh, random life to the layout. It has lots of beautiful lights, but uh, they just, they're always on, you know, it's its just steady state, which is okay, but you know, occasionally one wants something to change a little bit. So that's what uh, I've been working on. On the internet, in my research, I discovered that uh, there were a number of people that were playing around with this concept. Slow flashing LEDs. There were several variations on this concept, but uh, they all were based upon this uh, 555 um, IC chip, integrated circuit chip. It's a very tiny little thing, but it's a timer. And uh, there's one, one concept drawing, and that alternates two LEDs. One comes on, one goes off. And then over here is a variation where it just flashes one on for a while and then off for a while. And you can control the length of time they stay on or off with these variable resistors here. And over here, trim pots. And they actually control the time. Both circuits use the same timing chip and most of the same components, but um, not precisely the same. 10 microfarad uh, condenser or capacitor. The resistors vary. I started out trying to operate mine on 12 volts, but uh, I didn't like some of the problems I ran into, so um, I've decided to go with about 6 volts. I'm going to feed this, uh, this building with about 6 volts, which seems about right. Let me scroll over here. I'll show you the one I'm using as a power supply. I bought this on Amazon. It has a, it can be varied. You can dial it up and down with this uh, little rheostat here. I have several of these around the layout and they're all set for 12 volts DC, but the, they're all hidden because um, I'm concerned that someone might come by and crank up the voltage on it and blow a bunch of stuff out. So. Uh, I don't have them uh, available, exposed, should we say, and this one won't be either. But it's a relatively simple little circuit. And here are the two that I built based on this, these two diagrams right down here. I built them on project boards. The same way I built the uh, the resistance control for the individual LEDs. Um, you, if you don't remember, I I did a series when I built these. That's the control for uh, the the high rise building up here, and when I turn up the room lights, the daylight. 
you really don't notice it much. You know, there, there's a little, there's a light on here and there, it would seem, but um, you don't really see it much. However, when you turn the lights out, However, when the lights are out, um, they're very clearly visible. Oh, the tape. I better explain that. Why is there tape on the exterior plumbing? Well, the reason is because that is, I just glued those on permanently, and that's what's holding it on until the glue sets up. In fact, I'll go over and uh, take that tape off right now.